it seemed apropos to end this supersized first day of the Global Plant Forward Culinary Summit Virtual Edition with something festive. So we have Lauren Fitzgerald, who is the Assistant General Manager at BIA in San Francisco, here to talk us through crafting a great bar program to complement your plant forward menus and also to lead us through making your own cocktail. Um, and hopefully we'll have Lauren joining us on the stage in just a moment. Um, but in the meantime, it looks like we're still getting a few people coming into the room. So welcome everybody. Hopefully it's less um, difficult to navigate than a room. And it looks like we've got Lauren here. I think we're just working on getting sound. Lauren, can you hear us? Yes, absolutely. Can you Hi, hear me? Great. And we can hear you. All right. Before I turn things over to Lauren, just to note that you can probably see that she is joining us from the beautiful bar at Baya, which looks like a dream right now after having spent so much time at home. <laughs> but that also means she needs to keep her mask on for safety reasons um, with the restaurant being open. So you might just need to turn your volume up a bit to hear her. Please feel free to do that on your own device. Um, you can also get a larger view of what she's doing by double clicking on your screen at any time. And finally, we want to see all of your cocktails. So get ready to hit that share audio and video button at the end of our session uh, once Lauren has uh, led us through our shake along so that we can do a collective cheers. All right, with that, I'll let you take it away, Lauren. All right, hello. Welcome to the beautiful Baya Bar in San Francisco. I wish you all could be here right now with me uh, soon. Soon, I hope we'll be able to seat everyone at the bar and you'll be able to appreciate this beautiful space in person. But thank you so much for joining us virtually. I am so excited to talk to you about next subject. This is totally my thing, creating plant forward pairings, creating cocktails for plant forward restaurants. Um, I actually am working in a place right now, Baya, which is a completely plant based restaurant. Um, but whether, regardless of where you are on the spectrum of plant forwardness, uh, I think that all of these concepts can be totally useful to you in whatever type of uh, bar program, in whatever type of plant forward bar program you are looking to create. Uh, so before we get really into the process, uh, I wanted to check in with everyone about what you're going to need at the end of the segment for our shake along sours so that in the next few minutes while we're talking, you can make sure that you have everything you need gathered so that we can all shake a cocktail up together. Uh, so quick overview of what you will need. You will need shaking tins or something to shake liquid in. It can even be as simple as a mason jar. Uh, with a tightly fitting lid, that actually works great. Or you can use shaker tins like I am uh, that we use at the restaurant. You also are going to need some sort of measuring device. I like these Japanese jiggers. Some people prefer these bucket style. You can use whatever you like to measure in ounces. You want to have ounce measurements here. You'll need some ice. Uh, and then a strainer, at least one strainer. Sometimes I will use also a mesh strainer. Excuse me. A mesh strainer in addition to my Hawthorne strainer if I'm wanting to make the drink really nice and clear and no bits in it. Uh, so some kind of strainer, or even you don't have to strain it. You can actually keep it rough and rustic if you like, whatever suits you. And then a glass for your drink. I'll be using a rocks glass. Pick whatever kind of glass you have. The idea here with the shake along sours is that everyone can participate regardless of what you have in your pantry. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention in the list is a muddler, which if you're using some kind of fruit that needs smashed, like I am blackberries, you'll want to have something to smash them with. So we also have a muddler on hand for that. Uh, you'll need, in terms of ingredients, two ounces of the spirit of your choice. 
one ounce of citrus, lemon or lime, and then a half an ounce to an ounce of sweet and a half an ounce to an ounce of fruit. Now that's where it starts to become more of a personal call as far as how sweet you want your drink to be, what sort of fruit you're using, personal preferences, but there's a quick overview of what you're going to need to gather over the next few minutes. So let's talk about creating a cocktail program for your plant forward restaurant. Uh, next, I'm sorry, I should have said next slide before, but I did not. So there was the slide with the shake along sours. What will I need? Oh yeah, you're with me. Thank you. You're more on it than I am for sure. So how to create a beverage program. I'm gonna to try to do this as the quickest overview I can so that we can talk more about individual cocktails and have time for the shake along. Uh, but I like to begin with the big picture. What does it look like? What is my overall aesthetic? How many cocktails do I want to have on the list? What's the breakdown? How many are stirred? How many are shaken? What colors are they? Uh, so I have an example here where we've drawn up a picture uh, of the cocktail program for my friend Deb and Patrick's wedding. Now, as you can see, they're all in the same kind of glass, which was one of the restraints. Um, but the, the picture, I will say, this picture, this picture is like step three. This picture is after we've worked out the brainstorming, kind of figured out what everything is going to be, and my sister drew it up all nice. The truth is, I'm gonna show you, that most of my notes in this step look more like, I don't know if you can see this here, but they're much more all over the place. They're much more drawings, feelings, working out ideas. You know, the process, the creative process. So. Begin, though, with this idea of the big picture of what you want your program to look like. And then I start asking myself questions to figure out more the details. Uh, what does the overall aesthetic look like, but also how will the drinks pair with the food? What kind of food are we serving? How do we want the drinks to complement the food? Often does the drink menu change? Is it seasonal? seasonal? Is it changing every month? Is it changing maybe once a year? Does it change never? Uh, you're thinking about menu layout, colors, glassware, and I find it helpful then to draw, to start drawing this up. Moving on, next slide please. So what does a str strong bar program have? I realized, thinking through this, that in a way this applies to any bar program, not just a plant forward one. Um, but these things are still true, so worth mentioning. Uh, we use fresh juices, we use seasonal products, we complement the food, and everything is well organized. Leading to the next slide, please. This is very important, this is not the fun part, but I have to say it, the deliverables are very important. You need your menu, your costing, your recipes, your prep recipes that go into those recipes, your ordering and inventory info, and your server notes, all to be in place before any menu rollout happens. Um, I've got some examples of what these deliverables might look like, uh, and this is definitely the less fun part. So we're going to move on, but it is important, so I feel like I should say it. Shout out to Aaron Ray for driving that concept home to me. Uh, any strong bar program is, is well organized. So specific considerations though, for your plant-based bar. So I've worked with a lot of different plant-based bar programs of various times, and there are some things that I find useful in all of them. Uh, for one thing, the the adherence, the use of dairy, egg, and sugars can be something to consider when creating a plant-forward bar program, especially if it is going to be completely plant-based. Now, feel free to ignore this part and go gather things for your shake-along cocktail later. If maybe this really doesn't apply, you're not trying to completely cut out animal products from your restaurant, but the truth is it does open up it does open you up to a much larger audience 
when everything is completely free of animal products. And in a, especially if you're going to be in somewhere that calls itself vegan or completely plant-based, you will want to keep these things in mind. So they're really easy substitutes though. It's not that difficult to make a bar program completely plant-based. So the things that uh, are, that are sometimes um, need to be changed up include dairy. Uh, we don't want to use any dairy in drinks, obviously, if we're doing a vegan uh, beverage program. So coconut is a go-to, but you can also use oat or soy or almond milks. There's a ton of different, uh, Oatly is one of our sponsors. They are a, they work beautifully in a white Russian, a little oat milk for that, or even oat and coconut mix. Uh, for egg, in terms of egg whites in cocktails, aquafaba is something I've used a lot. Uh, the drink that's on the very first slide was an aquafaba sour made with egg white and wild seed. And uh, there are also other things on the market now that I've been hearing about. Methyl cell something. I don't know anything about it, so I'm not the one to tell you about that. But I hear it's really cool, and that might be the next thing I get into learning about. Um, so there's a number of different foaming agents besides egg whites that you can use. In terms of sugars, uh, evaporated cane is the usual go-to for simple sugar in a plant-based bar program, uh, but you can use agave or maple. Oh, note, uh, sugar, traditional sugar is processed with bone char. So that's the reason for, uh, for doing alternate sugars. But there's so many, and they can really give you a lot of good flavor. Piloncillo, um, you, can use, you can use a variety of different sugars, coconut sugar, uh, anything besides that really processed white sugar that actually has the least amount of flavor anyway. And then filtering and fining can be an issue if you're keeping things really strictly vegan. I don't want to talk too much about this. I could talk way too long about this. But essentially, you want to make sure nothing's filtered or fined with egg whites or other animal products. Uh, and this can be found out easily just by asking the producer. That's always what I've done. But this is less common to do anyway, so you don't see that very often. So the other things that I find people want in a plant-based bar from their drink program, they want things to be really fresh, fruit-driven, fresh citrus, fresh herbs, but they also want not too sweet, which doesn't mean no sweet, it just means balanced. It just means feeling fresh, feeling healthy, uh, low, no ABV options as well, and overall just high quality. Um, my experience with plant-based programs is that high quality is the name of the game, everything being the being as fresh as possible. And this really ties in with something that uh, Eric Repair was saying in his segment about all of this being inspiring. It's not about this being something that you're, um, that you're, that you're missing out on, that you're sacrificing. It's, wow, isn't this what you can do with it? It's so awesome. Hi, Elio. Uh, the staff is getting here, so let's move on. Next. All right, so once you've gone through all this, what's my what's my program going to look like? Um, the R and D process begins. That's the real fun. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for the cocktail creation, just going to go over this really quickly because this is kind of already what I was what I was talking about in terms of the process. Um, you want to find your point of inspiration, whatever that might be. Maybe the blackberries are really fresh and beautiful. Uh, maybe you realized that melons and gin go beautifully together. There's some sort of, maybe, maybe you're trying to make uh, something that feels like gin and a little sorrow. That's a, that's a friend of mine did a drink like that. Um, whatever your point of inspiration might be, you want to hold that in mind and then start looking into what classic you want your structure to be similar to. Um, classics are classics for a reason. It is very important, no matter how weird you want to get with your cocktails, to be thinking in terms of classic structures. I usually can take any drink and say, okay, here is how it's actually a riff on a classic. Most, most drinks are some some tweaked version of a classic 
to some degree. Um, but it's best to learn the rules so you can know how best to break them. So, referencing the classics to some degree, um, then you go through your recipe rough drafts, your tasting and fine tuning, and then into your menu rollout. So let's talk recipes. I want to make some drinks here. I've been talking and talking and talking. Uh, I would love to show you a drink called the New Leaf as our first example. This is a summer inspired cocktail. And Lauren, I'm so sorry to jump in here, but we're actually, the time has been flying and I'm afraid we're not gonna get to the shake along if we go through those okay. other cocktails. So maybe we can really quickly go over um, these recipes, which we've shared Absolutely. with the attendees and then jump into the shake along. Perfect, I had a feeling I was talking <laughs> too much. All right, so the new leaf is worth mentioning in that the melon and basil is a great example of heights of summer fruit and the shrub is something awesome to do with them that delivers a ton of flavor without a ton of sweetness. You can even use it in a non-alcoholic version, like in a Colin style with like the ritual gin. Um, I will, yes, I will not make that one. I will resist the urge to make that one for you, but it's beautiful and balanced and fresh. Uh, the salt and pepper is more of a fall inspired cocktail. It's actually from Wild Seed and is still on the menu there and is all about this sort of deep, rich flavors and colors of fall, these roots um, and that little bit of smokiness. It just feels very fall, but it's actually a cocktail that can work year round. And then we're going to go into our, oh yes, the, uh, the Negroni is a great example of a winter cocktail. A lot of times winter, you want more warming, you might want more stirred and spiritous. So this is going to be a pineapple rum and Jamaican rum combo with Grand Classico as the bitter, as opposed to Campari. It's like an older bitter recipe from Turin uh, and vermouth. So it's gonna be a stirred cocktail with pineapple as the sort of, as the sort of inspiration. Rum Negronis and pineapple being one of the coolest winter fruits in my opinion. Uh, so then that leads us into sours, springtime. Springtime to me feels like fresh fruit sours. You know, we have all these fun things starting to pop up, all these great colors. So for, for my sour today, I've chosen blackberries as the fruit. I've chosen tequila as the spirit. I'm uh, gonna use a reposado tequila lime as the citrus and then for sweet i'm actually taking a little bit of liberty here so this is kind of an example of how you can use the recipe to do whatever you want with it um, i don't like my drinks too sweet i like them balanced uh, and so i'm using half an ounce of an agave simple syrup which is actually a quarter ounce of agave mixed with a quarter ounce of water so half an ounce of an agave simple syrup and half an ounce of chinar, the bitter artichoke liqueur, which is gonna play really nicely with the fruit flavors, um, but also balance things out so it's not too bitter. So we're going to start first. If you wanna put salt on your glass, great way is to use, a, use citrus and just on one side. So you can give it a nice, good swath of salt. So there's plenty of salt there, but it's not a commitment. So next we're going to take our fruit, whatever that might be, and muddle it in the tin if it needs to be muddled. So about an ounce if you're using, especially if you're using fresh fruit, an ounce is perfect. That's gonna be about four berries. So we're going to take four blackberries, muddle those in our tin, and then add two ounces of Reposado tequila, one ounce of citrus and a half an ounce each of chinar and agave. And now I actually like to do it the opposite way that I said. I like to start with the sweet. Uh, Cal Kelly Gold taught me this. It just makes all the sense because if sweet, if sweet is sticking to your to your jigger, then the other liquors are going to give everything an opportunity to rinse out so it's not um, so you're not losing anything so one ounce of lime and two ounces of our reposado tequila and 
you are. Now, now for the fun part. I'm not going to go yet because I want to make sure everybody is with me. We're going to put ice in our shaker, whatever that shaker might be. We're going to seal it up well. And then you can shake whatever way you're most comfortable with. The goal is to dilute your drink, mix your drink, chill your drink, and not throw all of your drink everywhere. So as long as you're doing that, you can do whatever is most comfortable to you. I love that there's lots of different styles of shaking. So go ahead and ice your tin and your glass. And we're gonna go on three. One, two, three. And shake. <laughs> oh, it's so refreshing to see a professional shaking a cocktail <laughs> at a bar. <laughs> I know of lots of bartenders with much more fun shakes than mine. Mine gets the job done, but it's, you know, it's nothing fancy. And then we're going to take our cocktail, strain it over the ice. Oh, look at that beautiful color from the blackberries. I wish you could taste this. The blackberries and artichoke together such a beautiful flavor um it's so it is so vegetal too which people really appreciate it has that like i said that healthy feeling to it anyway and as lauren is putting the finishing touches on her drink um again we would love to see everybody come up on stage with us um, and take a and do a collective cheers to end our global plant board culinary summit first day so go ahead as you're um on the top of your screen there should be a share audio and video button or a join button and hopefully we can get you on stage sometimes this works sometimes we lose people in the internet as it's happening but hopefully we can get um people to join us up here we've got robert hi robert, hi, robert. <laughs> do you have a drink also robert yeah oh well, okay fair enough oh joseph hi joseph I, I cheated a little bit and had my bot tend to make a tray of everything. Oh my so. God. <laughs> Way to show us all up, Joseph. <laughs> and Rajiv. Awesome. Hi, Jackie. Oh, we've, got, we've got shaking going on in the background, I see, with Shalia. Looks That's like you also yeah. outsourced, um, outsourced the yeah. work there. <laughs> I did, but he's the one who actually wants to do this for a living and he's really good at it. So nice. I'm going to look at that. Hold yes. Usually I would have my husband doing the shaking um, in this case, but um, and Bahista and Michael and Lori, thank you so much for joining us. I think I think we may have maxed out the screen at this point. So um, you are all going to represent um, the rest of us and let's hold up your cocktails and cheer. I don't have one, I'll pretend to do this, but cheers everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to the first day of Global Plant Board. And with that, we are out of time. So thank you so much to all of our participants. Thank you so much, Lauren, um, for joining us and showing us this beautiful glimpse of, um, of the restaurant and bar life again. It was so wonderful to have you. Um, and um, and sorry, I'm losing my notes. I'm so disoriented from all of the cocktails coming around. Um, so that is it for our first day, but we still have lots more incredible presenters uh, coming at you over the next two days, including our farmer chef taste along and opportunivore challenge on Thursday. And if you don't know what an opportunivore is, you'll have to tune in to find out. Don't forget that all of the presentations and recipes that you are watching, as well as recordings of all the sessions are available to you on the conference resources page of our website. The password was emailed to registered attendees earlier this week. Thank you to Unilever Food Solutions for sponsoring our upcoming networking reception and for their vegan fried cauliflower tacos in snack inspiration. It is Taco Tuesday after all. All of our networking activities make you eligible to win some great prizes, including that coveted free registration and travel to next year's Global Plant Forward Summit. You can start a one-on-one -on -one chat with a randomly selected attendee in our networking feature. You can pop into the Innovation Hub to say hello to our sponsors. Here's a glimpse of all of the cool programming happening there.
And I'm so excited for tomorrow's program when we will be visiting farms around the country as well as hosting more breakout sessions covering everything you want to know about appreciating acidity, bio and agro diversity, cooking colorfully and designing great plant forward visuals. For now, enjoy your cocktails, enjoy and also enjoy today's closing reception sponsored by Unilever Food Solutions and see you all back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern.